the artist engagement contract, it's can be confusing, but it's extremely important. And in this video, we're going to break it down, make it easy. So let's go. Hey, what's up, freestylers? Latif here, exploring with you the voice, sound, and culture of freestyle music. And every week on this channel, we discuss ways that we, as a freestyle music community, can recognize, define, and nurture the culture that we know lies within the genre. If you're new to this channel and feel like this is something that you can get down with, do me a favor and smash that like button. And if you click subscribe and the little bell beside it, every time I upload a new video, you'll be the first to know. I always figured that this was uh, a pretty uh, important um, topic right here. <clears throat> One of the things that I'm asked by a lot of the promoters when they book for me is about the contract. Um, as soon as someone hears the word contract, right away they think legal, um, complicated, um, maybe a trap off, one-sided, they think lawyers, they think expense, they think time, and with the artist engagement contract, it shouldn't be any of that, okay? And this is the reason. When someone calls us for an act to book a show, especially for freestyle, these are usually track shows. They usually one night, fly in the day of the show, do the show that night, fly back out. There's no sense in taking two, three weeks to set that up and it costing you all this money in lawyer fees. So what most of the agents do, um, as well as myself, is we create very simple one-page contracts. Now, if there are stipulations or maybe other uh, add-on things that, uh, other things that need to be added to the contract, then we'll do what they call a writer, and that's basically like uh, uh, an amendment to the uh, to the contract, an extension of the contract. So I try to do my best to stay away from writers when it comes to freestyle. I We usually don't have any problems. I kind of discourage a lot of promoters, uh, a lot of artists from adding writers uh, because those can be deal breakers, okay? Uh, right away, because they have a writer, they feel that they have to ask for certain things. And honestly, at this point, I would discourage it, okay? There are certain times that we do use writers, um, and we could get into that another time when I do speak about writers. So um, what we're going to deal with right now is the artist engagement contract. So this is the contract that I issue the promoter to sign. After the promoter signs, I hand it to the artist. The other signs so I'm in the middle of the two um, and I make sure that the, the deal works out for both sides so I've always said the best deal is when both sides walk away feeling happy there are a lot of situations when um, there's a deal it could be anything I'm sure many of you have experienced this where when the, once the deal is closed and you walk away, you start to think and you start to think and you start to feel like it really wasn't a good deal for you. So um, <clears throat> we try to do our best, you know, to make it as clean, as simple and as fair for both sides. Our ultimate goal is to go get the artist the money they're asking, do the show, have an incredible turnout, send everybody home and hopefully the promoter will do it again. And this is how we benefit the entire genre okay so before I continue on at the end hang around at the end of this video I'm gonna tell you where you can get uh, a copy of this same contract that we're working on it'll be a blank uh, basically the way we're gonna start it off um, so that way you can play with it you kind of you can print it out you can copy if you want to use it um, you could try it out if you have any questions you can try filling it out like do like a make-believe uh, act, like you're, 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 you're booking an act. Uh, once you go through it one time, I mean, you're gonna see how simple it is and really how simple it should be, okay? So let's go back, let's get into it. I've never really done this before, so 
please bear with me. Um, but it should be fun and it should be interesting and it should help both of us actually. So it gives me a chance to kind of look at my contracts again and, and, um, and get going, okay? So let's go down to the screen. Before we start, many times I'll use like um, Microsoft Word um, for my contracts. Uh, in this, uh, this uh, um, demonstration here, I'm going to use Illustrator only because I'm able to move things around. And I do use Illustrator a lot of times for my contracts. I just, I like the format and the fact that I can kind of customize it. And if you look at my contracts and you look at anyone else's contract, mine pretty much stand out. I make mine pretty big. I try not to add a lot of unnecessary stuff in there because then I have to make the point size small. Also, I don't want to turn it into two pages. I want it to be one page. So whenever I get to a point where it looks like it's going to go into two pages, I try to do what I can to abbreviate, do whatever I can to kind of keep everything in one page, okay? My job is not to try and intimidate the promoters. It's to get the job done. I don't want them to feel compelled to bring this contract to an attorney. So this here is the artist engagement contract, okay? And you can see I left some spots blank. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this out. I'm gonna fill this out along with you guys. Um, and uh, we'll use uh, some of the artists. We'll use uh, the original cover girls, okay? Why not? They're my act. Um, and then from there, we'll just use some fictitious information just to fill it in. You guys get the idea. Um, if you have any questions, Okay, pause the video, go to the comments, ask the question so you don't forget. And then when I get back to it at another time, I'll be able to go in there and answer all your questions. Okay, so the, the idea here is to make this as easy as possible to understand, to let everybody know that it's really simple and don't be intimidated by it. No one's trying to trap you off. Um, and once you see my contract, Really, any contracts you deal shouldn't be far off from what I'm giving you. Some will add writers, some will add terms and agreements. Uh, don't worry about that right now. We'll get to that at another time. Okay, so, all right. <clears throat> um, so let's begin. Okay, so as you guys know, here is my logo. Law Entertainment. I also put it up here, Law Entertainment Bookings and Management. That's what I do. This makes it clear what it is. This is an artist engagement contract, meaning we it's a contract that engages the artist, okay? All right, so let's we'll start with the first line. Agreement made this blank day of blank between blank, herein referred to as artist, and blank, herein referred to as purchaser. It is mutually agreed between parties as follows. Now, okay, so let's start. Agreement made this blank a day. So today is the second, the second day of April, of April. I'm gonna keep everything caps just so you see it. And it's gonna be in red so you see where we're making the changes at. So it's gonna be agreement made the second day of April 2019 between, this is where we'll put the artists. Though I'm drawing up the contract, I'm not on the contract. So it's not between me and the promoter or me and the artist, it's between the promoter and the artist, okay? so. We're gonna put here original cover girls. All right, and you see here it kind of went outside the line and that is fine, that's gonna happen. If it's a smaller name like Noel, it will fit, okay? So we're gonna bring this down here and we'll leave this there because it looks like it's not gonna fit either. So the agreement made the second day of April 2019 between the original cover girls here and referred to as artists and uh, who should we use as a promoter? Let's see. 
who can we use as a promoter? We'll use uh, um, uh, da, 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 da. we'll just call him Mr. Promoter. How's that? All right, let's do this. This is this is clear. Actually, I gotta I gotta make this clear. This is important. It's actually herein referred to as the purchaser, not the promoter. There is a difference, okay? The purchaser can actually be the owner of the club. It could be um, a board of director, a, a director of the board of directors. It can be an organization. It doesn't necessarily have to be the promoter, okay? So the promoter could be hired by the purchaser to promote the show, and the purchaser puts up the money. So it's important that we have the purchaser down there, the person who's going to sign the check, who's going to um, or wire the money to you. Because if for any reason you put the promoter's name here and the promoter did not send you the money and something happens where you have to return that money, you cannot return that money to the promoter. You have to return that money to the purchaser. Keep that in mind. It's very, it's, it's a tricky, it's a tricky one. And I've had instances where promoters, I won't name names, and these promoters are from way back. They don't even exist anymore. But thank God we have some pretty decent promoters these days. But this promoter tries to get me to send back the purchaser's money to him. Now, had I had his number, his name here, that might have been the DR, might have had to send him the money, but then I would be responsible for the money, which means that the purchaser can later on come to me and say, hey, where's my money? And I'll say, hey, well, I'll send it to Joe Blow, and they'll be like, well, Joe Blow didn't send you the money, so why are you sending him my money? You have to send this money. So it could be tricky. So this has to be the purchaser. So in this instance, though, and sometimes the purchaser and the promoter are the same person especially for little for small gigs like clubs three five hundred maybe up to eighteen hundred capacity so it's a lot of times that the promoter and the publisher and the, and the purchaser is going to be the same thing so we're going to call this guy mr purchaser okay we're going to separate it right here for a second okay so he's going to be called mr purchaser so Go back, agreement made the second day of April 2019 between the original cover girls, here and referred to as artists, and Mr. Purchaser, here and referred to as purchaser. It is mutually agreed between parties as follows, okay? The purchaser hereby engages the artist, and the artist hereby agrees to perform the engagement hereon provided upon all terms and conditions herein set forth, including those hereof entitled Addy Terms and Conditions. Very rarely do I ever use these for freestyle shows, okay? And we're going to talk about that in a second, okay? But, so what this contract does, it is, this is now bonding the purchaser. That's creating the deal between the purchaser and the artist it's telling us what the deal is okay so the purchaser is going to pay the artist a certain amount of money as agreed in exchange for his performance okay to perform at the engagement and the engagement is where we're going to go at right now that's going to be the next one now addy terms and conditions um the inf um we're going to discuss it further as we get down a little lower um actually i gotta fix this here um, we'll talk about that a little bit, but Addy Terms could be anything. Addy Terms could be a per diem, okay? Uh, sometimes the artists say, they travel for people and they say, we want $100 per day per person for food. That's pretty typical. Uh, sometimes not that much, sometimes only $50 per day per person. <clears throat> this happens a lot of times when <clears throat> an artist is going to stay a few days um, and maybe he has a show. So maybe he's doing a show on Thursday and then he has another show on Sunday. So he has two days. So he's going to hang around and he could get the promo. He could ask the promoter to cover this. 
so it doesn't cost them money to stay. So they'll cover the hotels and so on, and they'll give them this per diem it's just so they can eat, you know. So that's what that is. Um, it could be a buyout. It could be um, uh, maybe they didn't want to, um, maybe the artist, instead of having the promoter fly them out, rather have the cash and then he'll fly himself out. We can put that in there as well. I have other spots where I put that kind of information. I'll talk about it. I don't really use added terms and conditions, but I leave it in there because I have used it in the past, but it's not that typical. So anyway, let's move on. Okay, get a little water here. All right, so. Place of engagement, very simple, okay? So this is going to be the actual name of the venue. So we'll call this, let's, the Freestyle, the Freestyle Nightclub. <laughs> Sounds corny, but I just wanna make it real clear so you know what we're talking about. And this phone number, a lot of times when we do these, uh, these um, engagements, uh, a lot of times the artists, um, I mean the promoters, they end up putting their phone numbers there and I don't think that's a good idea. They, I guess they feel that they don't want the venue, they don't want the promoters, I mean the artists calling the venue, whatever the case may be. Bad idea because if I want to know where the Freestyle Nightclub is, I just Google it, I can get the address, I can get the phone number, I can get any information I want. So it's good to put this number on there just in case. You never know if something happened to the flight and the artist is running late and they have a driver and they have to contact somebody and the promoter isn't picking up, they need another number, you know, or if they have to make it straight to the venue. This has happened to me in New Jersey one time. Uh, promoter, the limo driver didn't know where he was going. Thank God I had to, and back then we didn't have Google and all that. Good thing I, have to, I had the number there, and um, I ended up calling the club, and they got me in touch with the promoter, and they got us in. So put the, 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 the phone number to the venue here, not the promoter's number, okay? So we'll just go 212-123-4000. Um, uh, okay, that's an easy number to remember. Okay, address. Again. I've seen promoters put their address there. Why? What's the point? They can find the address if they want. You might as well put it on a piece of paper because the artists are going to take this paper with them when they go to the event. And if something goes wrong and they need the address, why not have it here? So let's just do it. So we go one, two, three, uh, anywhere. Uh, oh, we're gonna keep the capitals. Um, Anywhere, uh, anywhere, city, New York, <laughs> one, one, two, three, four, okay? The date or dates of engagement. And yeah, it could be dates because I've done shows where we've done the same, even the same venue, um, where we'll do one venue on a Friday and it might be like for kids, for teens, and then we'll do another, the same venue, we'll go back for the adults, or we'll do one venue, it's a private party, we'll go back later on to open house, open uh, public situation, you know? Um, so we want the dates. So the way we break down the dates is day as well as date. So I'll say Friday, January 24th, 2000, well, we'll say 2020, let's keep it, okay? Now, once in a while, it's not often, you might get to be determined. And the way this, the reason for this is what the promoter is doing is they have a certain amount of time that they can call us for, for a gig. But they're asking us if they give us the deposit, 
and they give us like three months, we give them like three months that they'll come up with an actual date within those three months if we can hold it. So we can do something like that. It's not typical. It's happened to me maybe three or four times, okay? So I just want to, the TBD, so when you see TBD, that means to be determined, okay? All right, so but we're gonna take that out for now. For, so we're gonna deal with the Friday. As a matter of fact, let's not even do it Friday because I never encourage Fridays. Saturday is your money day. Fridays are good, but if you have a choice between Friday and Saturday, make sure you grab a Saturday. I'm talking to the promoters, okay? Times of engagement, okay? Now, this is important. I'll tell you why. You can't put approximately or put any time, and you don't want to be slick and say, you know, 7 p.m. when you as a promoter know damn well you're not going to put the act on at 7 p.m. because that's what time everybody's coming in. So you're not going to do that. Thinking that you can get the artist in there early. Because if the artist wants to be an ass, they can stay there at 7, they could get there at 7.30, and by 8, 8 p.m. they could be the hell out of there. So um, you don't want to do that. Tell them what time you want them there, and tell them to be there an hour before. That's fine. That works. Um, especially with women. A lot of times the women, they don't want to do hair and makeup and then sit around for four, four hours. They don't want to do that. I know I work with all women. They don't want to do that. So if you have a show at midnight, a lot of times I'll put approximately midnight. Okay. We'll put approximately midnight because it might be 12.30, 12.15, okay? So we don't wanna, we're not, we wanna do the show. So we know it's gonna be more or less around there. And in these uh, these cases, I try to get the ax there by 11 p.m., okay? Um, we don't do meet and greets prior to a performance, especially with the girls. Again, they're doing their hair, they're doing their makeup. Um, they really don't want people all over them. They don't wanna be under hot lights. They don't wanna be, hugging and kissing, and then all of a sudden you tell them to rush to the stage. They want to go on the stage fresh, and when they get off, they'll do all the pictures you want. Most of them will. My my, my ex will at least do all the pictures you want, sign all the autographs you want, okay? So uh, approximately midnight, it's fine. Okay, full price agreed. Okay, and if there's a problem, if there's gonna be an issue, let's say, it's a slow crowd, they're coming in later. It might be a 1 a.m. show. Just call the artists immediately or their managers while they're at the hotel and then ask them if they mind. I've never had an issue with that. So uh, just don't have them go in and have them sit around extra long because it's gonna get uh, annoying and they're gonna, they're gonna let it be known, okay? So, full price agreed. When I talk about full price, I'm talking about the fee. I'm not talking about expenses, flights, hotels, none of that stuff. So this is just the fee. So I don't want to reveal, talk, you know, what I charge for the girls, but a number that's that makes sense. I'm gonna put for a fictitious number, folks, is ten thousand dollars. I'm doing this for simplicity's sakes. Okay. $10,000 will be the full price for the group, okay? Accommodations provided by the purchaser, okay? So, again, promoters, you're gonna pay the fee, and then you're also gonna pay the flights, the hotels, and the ground transportation for everyone that comes. So, it's gonna be the group and the road manager, or the group, road manager, and their dancers. Okay, so sometimes you'll have an artist that performs with two dancers. Usually in that case, it's not three traveling, it's four. So there's the artist, the two dancers, and the road manager. If you have an act that has a trio, it's the same thing. It's usually the group and the road manager, okay? Very rarely do you have extra people. Nobody really travels with hair and makeup and all that crap. Not in freestyle, sorry. Okay, anybody that I blew that deal for, Sorry. Anyway, accommodations provided by purchaser. 
Now I try to keep this all in one line, okay? And I always make sure that the promoters know, or the purchaser, whoever I'm dealing with, knows that all flights and hotels must be approved by me. If I'm booking a different act, they have to be approved by the artist or their manager, okay? So if you try to put an artist in a hotel eight, when they have a show that night, and they get to the hotel, and they say, I never agreed to this, okay? You're gonna have a problem because you're gonna be stuck having to find them a hotel before showtime. I know it's happened to me, okay? Um, so here we're gonna do it like this. So we're gonna say, with the cover girls, we're gonna go, accommodations provided by purchaser will be, okay, four, round trip flights three king rooms okay three because angel's my wife and all round trans okay <clears throat> again everything has to be approved so uh, we make sure we put that I can attach that to a writer <clears throat> um, Sometimes I'll just put it in the email um, These are times when you might need a writer if you see you're getting a little resistance from a promoter I know if I'm dealing with with an asshole already um, At that point I might attach a writer to this and then uh, at that point They have to deal with the writer because the writer has to be signed along with the contract, but 99.9% .9 of my promoters are cool. I have a good relationship with them. They're understanding. And nobody's asking for crazy stuff. The four round trip flights are not first class. They're economy. Okay? But what we will ask for is make sure. Oh, I better put that. Four direct. Or, yeah, we'll say direct. And then all ground. So I have to take, take care. Get out trans. So that way plus, or I'll just go plus ground, plus ground, okay? Four direct round trip flights. Meaning, you can't fly them from New York to Chicago to Texas, or from New York to Jersey to Atlanta, unless there is no choice. Um, so I have an artist that lives in Albany. No matter what, we usually have to connect her unless we're doing something in New York. So if we're going to California or we're going to Florida, there's usually a connection. Sometimes she has to go from Albany to like a JFK or maybe a Newark and then from there she has to connect. We have no way. There's no way around that. Also, sometimes we go to certain cities and we have to connect um, because the planes, there's no planes that go straight there. So, but if there is, it has to be direct and we make sure that it's round trip and has to be covered ahead of time. Um, what we will ask for also is certain seats. Like for me and Angel, I like the window. She sits in the middle beside me. Um, I don't like to be at the edge because I can't take people bumping into me the whole trip. Especially we do California, we're doing six hours of that. I can't, I can't take it. Um, anyway, so three king rooms. The rooms have to be at least a four star. Four star is very typical. Nothing that says motel or in. Okay, we don't do that. And I don't know really any acts who do it. So Holiday Inn, out. Motel 6, out. Red Roof Inn, out. Okay, so um, we get rid of, um, hit me on Facebook. Okay, anyway. All right, so three king rooms. Uh, your most e economic hotel that we're probably not, never gonna have a problem is gonna be the Hilton and the Marriott. Even if it's the Hilton Gardens or the Marriott Courtyard. Those are both gonna be fine. They're gonna be clean. The rooms always look the same. We know what to expect. And they're not gonna break the bank. bank. Um, ground transportation. Now, back in the days, we never wanted to be there was no shuttles. You were not allowed to put us on a shuttle to get us to the hotel and back. It was actually put in the contracts. No shuttle buses. So 
The promoters were obligated to send a car and usually it was a luxury vehicle, which would be, back in those days it was a limousine. Nowadays it might be an SUV or a limo bus. Um, so the promoter would be obligated to pick the artists up at the airport, take them to the hotel, they check in, then pick them up again later on for the show, bring them back, then the next morning they'll pick them up at the hotel and bring them back to the airport. Okay, that was cool. X amount of years ago, I don't know, maybe 10, I stopped doing it. Even though we still do it sometimes, but I prefer a shuttle. So what I prefer the promoters to do is to put my acts, because there's always multiple, there's always you know, you know, three of us, you know, four of us traveling. And I have two girls that are coming in from different locations. And if I have Susie with us, that's even a fourth location. Um, so everybody's coming in at different times and to try to get somebody to wait two hours for somebody else's flight to come in or it just becomes a headache. So what I tell the promoters to do is find a four star hotel, Hilton or Marriott at the airport or close to it that has a shuttle to and from the airport. Doing it this way, they don't have to worry about picking us up at the airport. We'll get to, we'll get off the airport, we'll get our bags, we'll jump on the shuttle, we'll go to the hotel, we'll check in. The only thing that the promoter has to do is pick us up from the hotel, take us to the venue, and back. That's it. We'll get ourselves the next day to the airport. This is cool. Also, we can control our own times. Um, a lot of times when there's multiple acts, if there's an act that has a noon flight, and another one that has a 10 a.m. flight, they'll send everybody at 7 a.m. to the airport. So, and that sucks. Okay, nobody wants to do that. So I'd rather stay close to the to the airport. I'll shuttle it in, and my girls are fine doing that as well. Okay. So that's ground transportation to and from the venue. It's important. Um, it's always got to be a luxury vehicle. It doesn't have to be a limo. It has to be a nice uh, SUV comfortable when you're sending a driver please send only the driver not the driver and his wife or the driver his cousin or the driver and his two kids don't do that send just the driver make sure it's not one of these you know make sure it has to be presentable the car has to be clean you gotta have some sort of respect for the artist that's all anyone really asks because trust me we've been in some craziness you know it's just it's a little embarrassing so it's an SUV, doesn't have to be SUV limo, doesn't have to be a Hummer. Nice, decent SUV that the artists can throw their bags in. Just the driver, no extra people, no fans in the car. It's really difficult to drive somewhere when the artist wants to unwind and you have a fan asking a million questions. We appreciate it. It's a beautiful thing, but that's not the time for it. Okay? So. Okay, so, um, getting real dried up. That's fine, I got no water here. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right. All payments, this is the next line, we're right here now. Okay. All payments shall be paid by cash money order, certified check, or bank draft, okay? So let me break this down, okay? All of this has to do with the deposit, with this first one. So, the deposits are broken down into 50%, okay? That's what, that's what the, so if it, if this full price agreed upon is 10,000, then obviously, this deposit right here is going to be 50% of that, which is $5,000. Okay? All right. $5,000 deposit shall be paid by purchaser to artist's agent, which is me. No later than. Now, this is how I do this. I look at this date. It says the 2nd of April, 
If you're really interested in doing a show, you're not going to call me for the second with the intentions of locking it in a month later. I expect you to lock it in by the next day. So this here would be no later than no later than April. Oops, let me get some caps. April 3rd, 2019. Okay, so let me read that out so that way. Okay. No later than April 3rd, 2019. Now, this is without me asking the promoter, the purchaser, anything. This is automatically what I'm going to expect because if you want to book an act, I can't hold a date. So if you want this date right here, like January 24th, okay, and you book this show on the 2nd of April, but your intentions are to pay on the 5th, and I'll notice, but someone calls me on the 4th and they're ready to pay. My job is to get make sure that the artist is secure with their shows. So you're going to lose that show. Even if I didn't agree, even if I wanted to hold a date, I have to consult with the artist. And there's a lot, of, a good chance the artist is going to tell me, no, let's go with the person who's ready to lock it in right now. So that's just the way it is. So I tell a lot of artists sometimes, I'll get an artist that will shop a show, but their intentions is to lock it in in four months they want to check availability and I tell them all the time I said listen I can check the availability today for uh, January 24th but as soon as I hang up the phone they could get booked I have no control of that so it makes no sense to call me four five six months before a show um, call me the week of call me a few days when you know you have the money and you're ready to go um, it's freestyle. There's plenty of artists that we can replace with. So if one artist isn't available and you can't change the date of your event, then we can replace them with another artist. That's simple. It's really not that big of a deal. So, but um, if you're serious and you want a book, well, this is what we're going to, um, this is what we're going to expect. We're going to expect uh, to be uh, to get the deposit in the next day. That means that you're serious, okay? So today, actually, I booked, um, they called me yesterday for the Cuban Fest for Little Susie and for the Cover Girls, and they just texted me a little while ago, said deposit is in, and they texted me a uh, picture of the receipt, okay? That's the way it's done. Now, I'm not insensitive. It might take a day, it might take two days. I'm not gonna hold somebody to this date, you know, to, um, no later than April 3rd. That's for my security here. Um, but if you call me and you're communicating now, if you're disappearing now, I don't know what's going on. And somebody calls me, I'm just going to take the date. I'm not going to be able to hold it. It's just the artist will get upset if I do that. So, all right. Now, when you say the deposit, that's when this all applies. Cash, money order, certified check, bank draft, as follows, okay? Um... So however you want to get me that $5,000, that's fine, okay? Don't send me a post-dated check that's three months old. That's, uh, that's post-dated for a month or whatever. Actually, no post-dated, <laughs> maybe for the next day, and that is it. So that's not going to work. That money has to be in, and it has to clear immediately. So if you're sending me a check, that's fine. You cannot promote. You cannot mention the show until I get the check. I put it into the, into the, the account, and it clears, Okay? So that, I will give you that. The only thing is that if you're really hustling and you're trying to start promoting, you're not going to be able to do anything until I give you the green light that the money has cleared in the account and we're safe to go. Then we can promote, okay? The best way of doing it is a wire or go to the bank, take the check or get cash, put it into the bank and send it. We don't do credit cards. I don't like to do PayPal. I just like regular check. Put into my account or wired. You'll have to cover the fee. Artists will not cover the fee. I won't cover the fee. 
So uh, you could try Zelle. Zelle's very limited, so it depends on like a group like the Cover Girls. You wouldn't probably wouldn't be able to use Zelle because uh, I think their cap is like twenty five hundred bucks. So um, so the deposit is fine. You have all those choices. The balance is this line now. Balance shall be paid by purchaser to artist agent in cash, no later than. And with me. This is where we like to get our money. Arrival at hotel. Okay. Now, that doesn't apply to everyone. Um, a lot of times when we have promoters that we're used to, that we've done business with, we don't have a problem collecting at the venue. We have a history. We're cool. No matter what, even if it's a relative, that money has to come in prior to the performance. So it's usually immediately when we enter the venue or the club, we expect to, for you to hit us up with an envelope and it has to be in cash. No exception. No bank draft. No certified check. No coupons. <laughs> No gold coins, has to be cash. And of course, that balance will be $5,000. Big bills would truly be appreciated, though I don't make that a point. I don't make that a big deal. Um, some of these clubs pay us that money from the door and they're collecting like 10, 15 bucks, so they don't really have $100 bills. Even though I do, um, uh, encourage promoters to make sure that they have cash on hand. Don't rely on the door to pay the artist because if you come up short, the artist is not going to go on stage, so it could become a problem. So um, have that money at hand. Don't don't um, don't rely on the door to do that. Okay, so five thousand dollars balance. Shall be paid by purchaser to us no agent, artist's agent in cash. By purchaser to artist's agent. Actually, this is wrong here. Let me fix this. This shouldn't be artist's agent. This should be artist. So let me fix that. That's why this didn't fit before. Okay? So <clears throat> And when I mean agent, I also mean manager. I mean, when I say artist, I also mean manager. So, uh, but I'm not going to put artist there. So, what's going to happen is, a lot of times the artists are going to collect their own money. Other times, they're going to have a road manager with them. So, but to make it clear on that, if the artist says, if you go to pay the artist, they say, oh, give it to him. You're good. Give it to him or her. All right? So, I like to collect my balance uh, paid by purchaser to artists in cash no later than arrival at hotel so when I arrive at the hotel you could do two things as a promoter you could be there waiting for me or you could bring the money or send it with the driver when you pick us up however you got to give me a chance to get the money and a lot of times we'll lock it in the safe or whatever the case may be even if I take it with me it doesn't matter I don't want to collect and count that much money in a, in a club I just don't want to do that it's not comfortable plus I have to keep my eye on the artist that I'm with I can't be you know uh counting money and i'm not watching my act so it's uh so i'm more comfortable dealing with it at the hotel we're there we're gonna do the show trust me uh and that goes with anybody but a lot of artists are cool with collecting at the at the club or at the venue that's fine too okay so this is really just my situation uh it's just through my own experience all right so now, let me, uh... Okay, additional payments, if any, shall be paid by purchaser to artists, to artists, no later than... Uh, this too could be no later than arrival at venue or, or venue or arrival at hotel. And like I said, this is if there's a buyout of any kind, let's say I said I was going to take a 
a taxi and you were gonna pay me some extra money uh, per diem any of that extra stuff so um, we hardly ever use this I think I've used this in my entire career maybe three or four times so it's not um, not typical okay now we come here to this little uh, clause here if scheduled payments are not made on time artist has the right to cancel this agreement and purchasers shall be liable to artists for damages in addition to the compensation provided herein. Okay? So, that could be the case. Okay? We've had plenty of times that um, shows fell through. My job as an agent, as a representative of the genre, is not to give anyone any hardship. Things happen. Okay? I just did a show recently where um, three times we tried to get to this venue. It was an outdoor venue. And three times that we were scheduled there, the weather changed and they got a cold front. So we had to postpone. Now, that wasn't their fault and wasn't our fault. However, technically, a lot of these venues would get in, uh, 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 rain insurance. I think that's what it's called, rain insurance. Um, and that insurance will cover anything that they paid out and then they could go and rebook again. So the artist could keep that money, set up another date and then do the show. Now, the reason why we wanted a deposit we needed is we need the ability to turn down other dates. So if you tell me, Hey, I got a show for you January 24th. I'm like, okay, cool. And you know, so we'll pay you in January 24th. But meantime, I have other people come to me and say, yo, I'm ready to pay you now. I can't tell them no, because what if your show never happens? What if anything happens? What if the club blows up? What if you die? <laughs> what if the artist dies? We, you know, we, you know, so we have to make sure that everything is covered uh, ahead of time, you know? Um, so, um, uh, that's pretty much how that works. So if scheduled payments are not made on time, artist has the right to cancel this agreement and purchasers shall be liable to artists for damages in addition to the compensation provided herein. So in other words, it could be rough. I haven't experienced that yet. So, um, and I'm here to work with you. So and, uh, any agent should be, be there to work with you. Um, and you're doing freestyle. So the money isn't, you know, it's not that significant as far as, you know, you're not paying, you know, $100,000 artists. Um, so, uh, it's, you know, the artists want to finish the gig. They want to do the show. So they'll work with you. A lot of times if the weather's bad, they'll postpone it. They'll say, okay, give me another date. So they, they're cool. I, I really honestly never had an issue. So, okay. Now, purchaser should, is to supply artists with the following equipment. Now, we do track acts. What I mean by track act is um, the artist plays their music, sometimes with a backing vocal. Um, it started out back in the days on a, a, a quarter inch reel to reel. We used to have to travel with those things, uh, thread them into the machine, and that was the track. And then the artist got a microphone and they sang to that's pre recorded tracks. Later on, we started working with DAP machines, little digital audio tapes. We would go, they had those things already set up. The machines, we would pop it in, same thing, artists grab a mic, do the show. Then we started doing CDs, okay, same thing. We traveled with our CD, we popped it in, they played it, the artists performed over the CD. Nowadays, it's MP3s. So. The artist will travel, for those who don't know what it is, um, something that looks like this, uh, flash drive. And this actually has songs on it. And they give it to the DJ or the sound man, they pop it into their system, and they can run the MP3 through their system, through their computer, out through the speakers, and the artist will grab his, him, his or her microphone and they will perform, okay? So, the way I usually write this out, again, I try to keep it on one contract. I could create a writer and I can uh, 
add all this stuff and just really make it elaborate honestly it's unnecessary it doesn't need to be that way so the way I would do for the cover girls is I would do it have actually copy here that so I can follow it I would do three wireless mic Oh, phones. Or I will go like this. Because usually I have this already pre written. Three. Now we'll go to phones. And we'll go three. Round bottom mic stands. The reason why I say, uh, just so you guys know, just the reason why I say round bottom. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, they have the mic stands that has the legs. Okay, so they have three legs. Um, very dangerous, especially when you're dealing with women who wear high heels on stage. Okay, they will kick that and it will fall and it will become a mess. So, we ask for the small round bottoms. Those things are really, really heavy. They're weighted and there's nothing to really be in their way. Um, and those mic stands are usually straight. They don't, they're not boomed. So they're not, uh, you know, sometimes a boom mic You'll see it has one and then there's another one that goes across. That's a little awkward, it's just a pain. So for the cover girls, we asked for three wireless microphones, three round bottom mic stands, um, a flash drive player. I'll elaborate more on that to them, which, and they'll know. They can run it through Serato or Virtual DJ, however they want to play it. Um, and I always like a CD backup. And CD player, so and that's as my backup. So they ask me, so what's the CD player for? It has a backup. I just rather have, I rather be safe than sorry. And the reason why I ask for a CD player, they're gonna have it. I can ask for other mediums, but just give me a CD player, we'll have it. All right, all right. So that's for that, um, and that's pretty standard with any group. So if it was a solo act, let's say a little Susie. It'll just be one wireless microphone. I would eliminate the round bottom stand. Don't need any for her. I would keep the flash drive and the CD player in. Another thing that we used to add, and sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, depends. If I do like um, a banquet hall, I'll also put on there stage monitors or wedges. Uh, because when we do a club or we do a small concert, they usually always have it. We never have to uh, mention that. But if we do like a banquet hall or someplace where they're doing like a little private thing, they don't really don't know anything about monitors. They don't understand the concept that the monitors are there so the artists can hear their music better. Instead of all the speakers facing out towards the venue, the artists can't hear themselves and they can't hear, you know, as a mic picking. It just becomes confusing. It's a mess. So we need stage wedges or monitors facing the artist. So, um, number six, purchaser agrees to all rider agree, uh, requirements. Now, here I put NA, I put non-applicable. Okay, that's only here. Sometimes it's applicable. And I'll put something like, see, attached, which means <coughs> it will also be in the file with this one or excuse me, or I'll put uh, to follow, which means it's going to come next, or maybe I'll get it to them tomorrow, whatever the case may be, all right? So, and we're going to talk about writers later on, so we're going to go into writers, I have a cover girl writer, I'll break that one down for you, <coughs> it's pretty interesting, and there's reasons for, for all of it. Um, and a lot of it is just to be comfortable, you know. Some people ask for stupid stuff on a rider. We just try to ask ask for things that we we can use, you know. All right. Number seven. Purchaser shall not ad shall not. Purchaser shall not advertise until deposit and signed agreements are received by Law Entertainment. Okay, and that's because I'm the agent on here. Uh huh. My company. Um, but it could be another company, so it should say the same thing with their company. Um, and this is important. Um, anything could go on unless the deposit and this contract is signed. I've had, um, I had a, 
a promoter once that him and his wife got divorced. And, uh, and you know, so we never, never completed the deal. And not only that, if promoters, if prom other promoters look at that date, let's say there's a promoter, another promoter also wants January 4th, right? He shouldn't know that an event is pending unless I tell him. So if another promoter who might also want January 24th, he should never see a flyer or see someone post on Facebook or social media about the same group doing that date if the contract is not signed or the deposit is not in. Because then that other promoter who might have possibly contacted that artist just isn't going to bother because in his mind, oh, they're already booked. So it's important that you don't advertise or mention anything until everything is locked in. Now, this isn't only for the artist's protection and to, for them to protect their money and their gig. It's for the, it's for the promoter. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Let's say I want to be a dick. And I, I, we booked the cover girls. I said, yeah, 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 go ahead. Book them. And I asked for 10,000, right? But we never agreed to anything. There's no paperwork. There's nothing. There's just a verbal over the phone, me and you. Um, and you start to promote them. And I start to see this crazy engagement. I start to see 20,000 views, thousands of likes, hundreds of comments. Okay, I'm going to look at that. And then I'm going to look at the thing. I'm going to find out how, what was your capacity. And I'll be like, wow, you know, he's going to sell out. This guy's going to make 40 grand. You know what? I'm going to bring the price up. I'm going to ask for 15,000 instead of 10. People do it. I don't do stuff like that. But at the same time, I tell promoters, don't promote or mention a show that we're working on until we sign these contracts and the deposit is in. Okay, because at that point, if the if the promoter comes back to me and says, "Hey, man, but you told me ten thousand. I said, "No, no, no, we never agreed to it. It was on paper, but after I thought about it and I saw the engagement and I saw all the people that wanted to see the show, I just feel it's only fair that my ad get another five thousand dollars. So promoters, it's for your safety as well. Do not mention or promote a gig unless you got that contract is signed and both sides agree to everything on it and the deposit is in the deposit is the key okay so make sure that money is in all right so number eight purchaser understands and agrees that deposits may be forwarded to artists prior to the performance so oh i'm taking allergy medicine guys so that's why i'm so thirsty I, I hate, I don't usually don't take anything. Ever since I moved out to North Carolina, it's like, this stuff kills me. I never got, I never had allergies in my life. So, but anyway, so, purchaser understands or agrees that deposits may be forwarded to artists prior to the performance. Now, back in the days, okay, even me as an agent, if a promoter booked, let's say, an artist that doesn't belong to me, Let's say Stevie B, okay? And the artists booked the artist, they booked the, the promoter booked Stevie from me and they gave me his deposit. I call Stevie and I'll say, hey, I got your deposit. He would go do the show. And when he came back from the show and everything was good, I would forward him his deposit minus my commission. We used to do that all the time. Um, we would hold the money until after the show. That ended. I kind of think that I might be responsible for that because I got to a point where I started forwarding artists that I trusted their money. I didn't want to hold anybody else's money. Not only that, I, I would get people at times that could use the money. So I've never had issues. Now, if ever I booked an artist and I sent them the money and there was a problem in any way, then Two things, I'll either never book that artist again, or I definitely would never send them their money again. But as of right now, yeah, we do forward the funds to the artists once everything is done. We don't hold their money. And then they pick up their money 
the balance at the, at the venue. So as soon as we book a gig and you wire me the funds and I do all the paperwork, I make sure everything is set. Once everything is set and you guys start promoting, I wire or send a check or deposit the money to the artist, okay? So I just wanna make sure that the, the promoters are aware that we do do this, okay? I'm probably the only one with that number that number eight clause in their contract. You probably won't see it with anyone else, okay? Number nine is what we call the radius clause. Artist agrees to no show within 75 mile radius, within a 75 mile radius and 90 days prior to above date of engagement, okay? So, all right, how do we look at this? 75 mile radius, we're gonna be very conservative. I know a lot of you guys drive 75 miles an hour, so for a lot of you guys, this would be an hour away. Average person, maybe an hour and a half, okay? All right, so the artist agrees to no show within a 75 mile radius. So at least an hour and a half in diameter, okay? So just because we do that, because an artist, let's say you're doing a Massachusetts show, you might be right next to Rhode Island. So we can't say, well, you can't do anything in that market. Because just because it's the Massachusetts market, you're still right next to Rhode Island. So I can't have a show, a competing show, with you on it three blocks away. So. And this has to be fair for all, all involved, you know, and I push this. And it depends on what kind of deal we have. This is pretty average with a club. This is fine and this is fair, okay? Sometimes we do bigger events. They pay more money and they give us a lot more shows. This 75 miles can go up as high as 120 miles. This 90 days prior is very standard. Uh, some also add on after show. <clears throat> after um, after the show, so they might do 60 days after or 30 days after, which I don't think that really makes no sense, <clears throat> makes much sense. I think that no other show should be pr promoted until after that last show is done. So I don't think that any artist should have to wait 30 days after a show to even book anything there. I think it should be as long as it's not violating and it's not any time prior to the initial show. So what I do to make sure of this, let's say you book little Susie from me for Chicago. Let's say this, let's work with this date, January 24th, okay? If somebody else wants them in Chicago, January 26th, all right? I, I don't go into contract with that 26th because They'll say, yeah, 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 I won't promote, I won't promote. But just the fact that they have a contract and they put a deposit, they start to whisper and they start to tell people, hey, don't tell anybody, but I got little Susie coming on the 26th. Hey, don't tell. And what happens is that can actually affect the 24th where people say, man, I'm not going to go to 24th. They're charging too much money. I'm going to wait. And I've seen those other acts. I'm just going to wait till the 26th and go. So we just don't go into contract. That's me. I don't go into contract until the day after that initial show. So if you want to book an act that's performing on the 24th for the 26th, you're going to have to wait till the 25th. That way, if you start promoting on the 25th, it's actually bogus. So my promoter, my initial promoter, can never come to me and say, you booked the show and they're promoting it before my show. They can never say that to me because it won't be true. And there's no contract. So they have no right to promote the show. So that could, you know, so that's how I do it. All right. Uh, and then the, uh, so we have the 90 days prior to the above date. Three months is good, man. I mean, if somebody's going to pay you X amount of, of money, you got to give them, you know, it's a big country. You got to give them the right to promote. Don't, don't be selfish. I see it a lot. I see acts that have a radius clause of, of 90 days prior and they'll try to be sneaky and sneak into an event and get a show and think nobody's going to say anything. And sometimes they don't. The only time it's okay to do it is if it's a private event, okay? Um, 
when there's no advertisement. So you want to do a, bir a birthday or a bar mitzvah, you know, the week of or the same night. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Nobody's going to know about it. But anything that's, um, that's public and they're going to advertise or they're going to promote on Facebook, your private party, they're not going to post it like that. It's not going to be for general public. So nobody's going to care. Um, back in the days, too, we used to be able to do uh, divide straight clubs from from gay clubs and it was kind of cool because the gay community a lot of times didn't attend the straight clubs so they thought <laughs> that wasn't really the case um, so if I had a show in a straight place I was able to book a gay club for the night before or the night or after they never found it to be an issue nowadays it is because both those audiences now mesh believe it or not um, most mostly um, uh, a gay audience will merge with a straight audience not necessarily the other way around uh, but you can go to a straight club um, so-called straight I guess <laughs> a club and it's a mixture of straight and gay so the promoters now kind of put a stop to that and I know because I just recently tried um, they called me for a pride show and I just tested I kind of figured that and the promoter said we get a lot of uh, you know audience members from that community and I understood so I had to pass on that show so that's it for that you know so again uh, artist agrees to no shows 75 miles within a 75 mile radius 90 days prior to the above date okay so then under here we have the name of purchaser Okay, and authorized representative. So sometimes the purchaser might have someone else who they're gonna have uh, cover sell. So a lot of times I'll have a purchaser and then I'll have a promoter here. So I might put here the promoter, right? So I'll put his thing small, the promoter. And uh, a lot of times I'll put his information You know, a lot of times I'll put his phone number. I, I usually still put, you know, I'll put him as a contact and I'll put his phone number here. Um, or under here, I will put, uh, you know, 567 uh, Purchaser Road, Purchaser Road, Road. Uh, so I'll have the purchaser's address and then under here, I have the promoter as contact and I might put something that says contact I'm just typing so fast and promoter and their phone number so and then let me get rid of some of these lines here then here will be the artist so here we have Mr. Purchaser. Okay. And then here the original cover girls all right and then please return all signed copies to responsible agent Latif Mercado this constitutes the sole complete and binding agreement between the parties here too La entertainment acts only as an agent for artists and assumes no liability the signatures above confirm that all parties have read and agreed to all additional terms and conditions provided, if any. Okay, uh, and then the rest of my information here. Okay, and that is pretty much it. So, I try to do my best to break down the contract. I really hope that it made sense to you Please, if you have any questions, comment down in the in the bottom. I love to answer the questions because, um, and I like them 
to be in the comments so that way when I answer them, other people can read them as well. Um, I'm open to answer whatever questions uh, I can. Um, also, down at the bottom is going to be a link to this particular contract, a blank version. So the way it started with all the lines blank, I have that to PDF form. So click the link. It says uh, download free contract. Uh, get a copy of that. Uh, you might as well have it. You can read it, you can sit down, you can print copies or whatever, fill it out. Um, you might have questions. Try filling it out. Like if you're booking an act, put some fictitious uh, information out there and see where you get stuck. See if you're, you know, trying to visualize yourself, you know, booking the show uh, from an agent, from me or from any agent. Um, this contract is really, really on point. I've been using this contract, I swear, since day one. I've never had an issue. Artists don't even read my contracts anymore because they're so used to them and they're so simple and they're so straightforward. You know, and that's the key is to make them comfortable. It's not intimidating, which is why I use uh, certain fonts. I don't like those little aerial texts and put so much. It's just too much. Um, that's my opinion when it comes to freestyle. Now, everybody else has their own way of doing things. This is the way I do it. It's always worked. Um, I've never, ever had an issue with a contract. So I gave you guys a contract that I've done thousands upon thousands of shows. These contracts I have written for, obviously, the cover girls, Little Susie, TKA, Stevie B, Lisa Lisa, Shannon, Shauna, Coro, George Lamont, Cynthia, Johnny O, Sweet Sensation, Seduction, <laughs> Sapphire. I mean, I could go on. Every single one of those artists have seen these contracts. The same exact contract, exactly the way it looks. So it works. And no one has ever had a problem. You could probably hold this up in front of a, an artist to say, can you tell whose contract this is? And they'll be, oh, that's Latif's contract. So it's it's pretty popular contract, okay? So I'm really hoping that you guys um, enjoyed this. I hope that you learned something from it. Um, I like doing this. Uh, too bad I took this allergy medicine, so I'm like freaking feel like I'm, I got cotton balls. What a day to have cotton balls in my mouth. Um, and that's it. So again, Please, any questions you have, ask. Make sure you get a copy of the contract and let me know that you got the copy. Fill it out. You know, if you want to scan it and show it to me and send it back to me and let me let me look at it or repost it somewhere on social media where I can see it, I'm cool with that. Or just send it to me as a message. I'm cool with that too. Let's, um, I'm, I'm here to help you. I really want to help you guys. I, I, th I think promoting is an incredible uh, opportunity for so many people. And by you guys getting involved in promoting actually helps the genre. So that's where my incentive is. And it's not about booking just for me. I, I never tell you guys, there's never any obligations. Um, there's a lot of agents out there. I've taught you guys how to choose the right agent. And they're good. They're good. And so um, I don't have an issue with that. Um, I just want you guys to, to try your hand at promotions if you're not already doing it. That's another thing. If you are already a promoter, uh, whether you dealt with me or not, do me a favor, let me know in the comments below. I, I just want to get a feel for, you know, who's looking at the, uh, these videos. So uh, it's really interesting to me. So, but until next time, listen, I really appreciate you guys. God bless you. I wish you a ton of luck. I hope you guys really, really kill it. And, you know, let's, let's just make it happen, okay? All right. Hey, I really appreciate you watching this video. And if it made any kind of sense to you, that thumbs up will let me know. And if you click subscribe and a little bell beside it, every time I upload a new video, you'll be the first to know. My name is Latif Mercado, and until next time, keep it real, keep it peace, and remember, freestyle for life.